States of America, to the Republic which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Father, which art in heaven, dear Lord God, we thank you for all your many blessings you bestowed upon the citizens of Dillard. Dear Lord God, we ask that you continue to bless our leader, our city council, our city manager, our city attorney, all the department heads of the city, as we are gathered here on tonight to make decisions for the betterment of all the citizens of Dillon. And we pray in everything that we do, we carefully give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
expressing an interest has paid off. Um, so they're going to be coming in at the end of this month or 1st of January about that. So we'll, you know, this time next month when we have our council meeting, we'll see where where that leads. Um, also talked with Rodney Berry and Congressman Rice's office, sent him uh, a copy of that through his email. So we'll see where that goes. Um, Glenn, I think, sent y'all the minutes on the pre-treatment permit with Purdue. And, uh, it sounds almost to me a little bit, Glenn, that they were resisting on the ammonia issue. I know you're going to get into it. I'm not going to ask you right now. But that's the way I took it. Some, you know, he, Jeff, I think Jeff Smith is his name with Purdue. Uh, you know, he stated removing the ammonia through the treatment is not is not feasible. And, well, I'd like you to tell us what is feasible or what can be done if they aren't going to do that. Uh, you know, where we're going with that in, in your comments. Y'all saw the notes, and they're getting back together here shortly, I think, next month also on that. I didn't get the notes. I think I just sent that you to just you. You just sent that to me? Okay. Because I didn't get you. That was, all right. that was just sent to you since you'd asked me that day. Um, that's on the loan and all the SRF stuff. And, well, uh, this was, we had a meeting with, we being me, myself, me, Hardy Jackson, Tammy Jackson, our lab director. And my county engineer had a meeting with Purdue, I guess, what, two weeks ago? Hard? Yes. And you know, we have a pre treatment ordinance that is drawn up in, by DHEC that they have been looking at for, they being Purdue, for several uh, weeks and months now that we need to adhere to. So it was one of those we're going to sit down and gain questions to see what we can work out. And they brought in their, their, lab director for total Purdue for environmental and he had some questions and my is getting back with answers for him and then we're going to meet in January to dot the I's and cross the T's per se. Uh, ammonia was a discussion. They don't know if they actually given us what they what we say they're giving us uh, and if they can bring it down to the level we're requiring. Yes, in the last month's DMR they sent us at a 17 and we're only asking for a 20. So they, we think they can meet the requirements we're asking. And, and I can't get in the contact. concentration of ammonia yes. was 17. Yeah. And how much did it cost for the extra to treat it? Yeah. Yeah. So we just, you know, and that helps with the smell also. I mean, but it also helps on our end we do our test and we have to turn it into DHEC if we're out of compliance on our ammonia levels and you know, we get a consent order. Uh, what we're trying to do with Purdue being that they are the only uh, facility under our pre-treatment ordinance is kind of treat them as DHEC treats us. You know, here's, here's the letter of the law, you know, we'll work with you as much as possible. So if, you know, if, if you make us out of compliance, DHEC comes to us, they don't go to you. So we're, we're trying to you know, bring them in online. Um, we went back, uh, Tammy Jackson went back probably 15 years, Hardy, and up until five years ago, they, they gave us good water on a consistent basis. You tell you what, they used to run nine gallons of chicken, and now they're down to about five and a half gallons of chicken. And, and that so has a lot you do. You've got to have concentration problems, and that's, you know, that was, I mean, honestly, I think that was my fault that I didn't pick up on that because y'all don't know how they kill the chickens. I know how they kill the chickens, and I know what they're sending us. I knew that sludge was going up, but I didn't realize our volumes had dropped so. So the concentration had to be high. To and then the ammonia just, was just another manifestation. Our sludge bills didn't go down, but our volumes went down, and that's what really led to, truth be known, that's what led to the sinkhole. Could very Volumes well dropped and allowed that gas on yeah. top. And, <coughs> and then was, another another issue, I guess in the last five or six years, hard to correct me if I'm wrong with how I state this, they used to 
feed their system with chlorine and chlorine. They would use chlorine at the end of the process to burn them on the oil. Which, which would help us because once they quit doing that, that has been de a deterrent on our end. So they're going to look at what that cost is going to be to maybe include chlorine back into their process. Mike, ever look at running that thing down in the swamp? <laughs> Technical. <laughs> it's expensive. I mean, we haven't got that detail, but it's, that would be an expensive endeavor. Well, uh, I mean, pre-treating it at $10,000 a month, that doesn't take long to pay for a, an expensive move. But that's that's where we are on, on that. And also in our discussions is Randy Brown, who is the plant manager, I guess is, is his title at Purdue. He is still interested in that we continue to do some kind of depreciation for them. Yeah. Um, and we just haven't come to those numbers yet. Has um, Mike given us any idea about what what kind of money needs to be in that? We, we're going to try to have something there the next time we meet in January to throw to to them so they'll have you know, some understanding. And we haven't worked out all the details. How is it going to be? Are we going to keep the same percentage? Of who's paying what now, or are we going to change that to another percentage? None of that's been discussed right now. We're just trying to. When I say percentage, right now Purdue puts in a larger 56%. percentage. percent. Yeah. They put in a larger percentage in that account than well, we did. I mean, I mean, we could share that equally, but their cost is going to be based on um, operation maintenance. And yeah, none of that. Will, none of that. Will change. that will remain the same. That is correct. I mean, we could fund the depreciation part of it equally. I, I think that's reasonable because ultimately when we use those funds, I mean, you don't want them to double pay for it, no. but uh, you want to be fair. But at the same time, we don't need to be caught, you know, with a, a million dollars in the uh, fund and then we've got a $2 million project that needs to be done yesterday. And, and they don't want us either because no. if, if we're down, they're down. Yes. And, and, you know, so... And that's that is a um, good sign that they're interested in and continuing to do that. They're, they're good corporate people. Yeah. So, and overall, with the meeting itself, uh, you know, it was a positive meeting. Uh, their lab folks are going to be back. In fact, I think Wednesday to visit our uh, facility just to see how our facility works, so they can go back and see what they can do to, to help us. And then, come back together. I think it's the second week in January that we meet to, um, to discuss this more. Uh, uh, just one other item. Uh, all the, uh, I don't know what account, Fund 20, Department 31, Revenues, it's all it is, it's a miscellaneous and return a check fee. How is that so, how much, why are we getting so much back on that? Are we pursuing it? That's reimbursement on lightning damage from our insurance company. Something like that. And there's not all return check fits. Yeah, all right. Well, I didn't know. That's the way it's stated on there. It says what? Miscellaneous? It does. Yeah. yeah. Miscellaneous and, and return and check fees. Yeah. And the uh, last thing, I'm just going to comment on this. It got me to me the other night after the police uh, was dead. I went to a Christian school and basketball game. It's kind of a thought of you. Going down Radford, back home. Stoplight at 301 at CVS. Just turned green. I clean I could email clean right after I got home. I said, I know it hit us, and it worked. Um, five patrol cars. But I know they were hitting 90, Jack, 90 miles an hour, right through the red light. Wham! Didn't look even the ambulance will slow down and honk and all that stuff. Well, I had to hit the brake pretty hard. They were there that fast on me. The car behind me. Uh, slid into the median to keep re from rear ending me. But I hope we don't have our apartments flying through the city limits at 90 plus miles an hour through a red light. <laughs> hope not. I hope not. Uh, that was almost a disaster. And um, I, I don't get dealt if it was the sheriff's department or a boat or the highway patrol, but good lord, that, could, that was just so unbelievable um, when I saw it. And I know you got a lot on the dock. I want to hurry up and get to Not uh, really. issue with the court, court systems and the executive session. And while we're at that, in case I do miss it, I don't miss it. I want to congratulate Dolphus Carter on his retirement coming. I don't know how many years he's 
been our city. Judge. 94. 94. September years. of 1994 to today. I 21 years. 21 years. Uh, we're going to miss him and all the service he's done for the city of Dillon. We wish him well in his future endeavors. I think we're going to have a little uh, recognition here tomorrow night. Thank you for all that he's done through the years. That, well, I, I was going to talk a little bit about the Purdue meeting, which you brought it up, and we've already gone on and over it. Uh, audit report will be presented in our next meeting in January. All that has been completed. And the only other item I really have, and I think Betsy will have it in the newspaper if it hadn't already been, is the Christmas schedule for the city uh, during closing days of Christmas and New Year's. Uh, all offices will be closed on December 24th, 25th, December 28th, and January 1st. Residential garbage pickup, that's where we come to your house and pick up recycles and, and your green roll carts. Those days that you normally get your trash picked up Monday through Thursday, none of that will be affected. You'll, you'll still get that picked up. The only thing that will be affected during the, those uh, four days will be limbs and leaves pick up. We don't pick up limbs and leaves the day the offices are closed. But your res residential garbage and recycling uh, will be picked up on a normal day. There won't be any double days where we pick up two routes in one day. So this was a simple one there. That's all I have at this point, Mayor. Yes, sir. Go straight into the citizens' report. Anything anybody out there wants to bring to our attention, this is the time. You do? Yes. Okay. Now, you stand up. Give us your name. Oh, my name is Andrea Morrison Ford. Um, I recently um, created a new organization called Bicyclists Building Bridges. We were approved in February of this year by the state senate, and. Um, I just wanted to make the city aware about what we do. And what we do is we take children to visit their incarcerated parents at no cost to them or their caregiver. Because when children, parents are sentenced, no one looks back to see what's going on with them. So they'll be getting counseling so that they can understand what, what's going on and to help them. Because statistics show that most children of incarcerated parents end up incarcerated themselves. So we want to try to intervene before that process happens. And also, parents return back to their children, strangers. And we want to make sure that these kids can stay in contact with their parents. Appreciate you know, what you do. I know our church has the uh, angel tree. I was at there Saturday with one uh, giving the presents to the children of prisoners. Um, so I think you're on camera with the... Uh, both media sources here, so it will be running for the next month, so you're going to get a lot of feedback on that. So if you want to give your name and contact, okay. you can do it here. Um, you can contact me at andrea181879 gmail.com or on my phone 843-506-2182 and on Facebook at Bicyclist Building Bridges. Thank you. We appreciate any help that we can get is a new organization and we're growing but um, we're also eager for members. Thank you very much. You for coming. You did a lot by coming tonight. Okay, thank you. Um, anything else? Uh, unfinished business ordinance 1510 and amended or stated master bond ordinance for the Highway 301 sewer relocation project. Anything new on No, sir. Also, Ordinance 1511 and SRF series ordinance for Highway 301 sewer relocation project. I make a motion. Have a second. Have a second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, no new business on the docket tonight. Uh, council member report. So Mr. Eller, anything you want to bring? Um, just one thing, Mayor, you spoke about trying to do some upgrade things at the uh, ball field. I want to have a quick question. Are we refinanced the bond for the wellness center? And that's coming out in February. Yes. The first of February is it the latter part of February? I don't remember the date. It was sometime in February. Twenty yeah. first. Twenty first. Okay. I lost it. Twenty first. Um. 
Also, the $193,000. Ms. Janet, when do you plan on taking that out of the hospitality fund? The $190,000. Yes, ma'am. The, the excess fund supplies? Oh, whenever I finish the audit, I'll take it out. So that's uh, what, March, February, March um, also? I'll take it out more than like in February when the audit comes to council. How much How much you think we're looking into trying to upgrade money-wise as far as have we looked at the plan trying to upgrade? No, not yet. Because no. that's really going to put the account a great number. I mean, we haven't, haven't done that. We're just now getting down to what we need to do. In fact, I, I wrote a letter today to request some funding to do some things out there from outside sources so that'll, that'll help. As soon as we can come up with, with a plan, hopefully next meeting in January we'll have something down and we'll see what we need to do or like to do. That's all right. I mean, we're going to be able to do a plan for employment for Christmas this time? I was going to discuss that with you in executive session. But on the debit card, you don't look into that phone? Like if we don't debit card? You know, Direct deposit, yeah, we're looking into that. That's all right. Um, I, was, uh, I was out at the uh, fitness center Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock. I think there were 20 kids. Now, it's a gorgeous day. There were 20 kids out there. Just that thing is nice. But I was out there at the, uh, you know, the little park yeah. out there, and the, you know that little, that surface is just amazing. That's the first time you've been on it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and evidently my crowd goes out there all the time. Um, they, a couple of things they would like, you know, or just to think about, is picnic table, you know, um, I told them that, you know, they're talking about, uh, some of the artistic shading, artistic meaning the, you know, you, you've seen them that, you, uh, I, I, there's an airport that has that, it, it almost looks like a tent. Mm -hmm. I, my own comment to them was, we don't want to hide the building because it's, it's such an attractive building, but, you know, maybe we could think about putting some picnic tables or something like that out there. Well, as far as inside the fence here, there's really no place to go. Right. 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 Yeah. Asked about, I asked about yeah. that when we yeah. were putting it out putting there. Putting it out there. And if there was no inside the fence, there's no yeah. space. You'd have to go outside the fence. Yeah. Yeah. Just and you still can do that. Yeah. You, you still can do that. that. And we were talking about at one time having some exercise stuff there for the uh, adults, I mean, which also could be outside. Yeah. Could, uh, could, well, and we have some places also along the track here the track to to do things like that yeah. also just a thought but it was it, it's this used it was so nice um, and of course it was a gorgeous day but it just uh, um, well you, you bring that up and I meant to bring up my report we had our annual um, breakfast with Santa Saturday yeah at the wellness center yeah. um, with the uh, Dylan Quantas club we've done for years and they came in and played and with Bounce House, ate pancakes, talked with yeah. Santa, and when they left, a lot of them went to the playground. Yeah. The, um, you know, we we live in a, in a, you know, in a, in a tough area. I mean, you know, there's just not a lot of wealth in Dillon County. But, um, you know, you step out there and, and you're in Columbia or Charlotte or Charleston, it just, it's really refreshing. City's done a great job out there. You know, something that all of us should be proud of, not council members. All of Dillon should be proud of, and I think I think they all. I'd really like to see those ball fields look the same. That's me. Uh, I'd like to touch on the with uh, our power issue the other Saturday uh, when we had a helicopter well, tore down the transmitter line and all that and. Does do they who does Duke Energy contact anyone with the city to help get the message out, or is it just based on as far as I, the emergency no, personnel? Not to my knowledge. I called our our contact with Duke Energy to find out you know, 
why didn't we have electricity? Right. And she had no idea. She said, I'll call you back. Right. And then in five minutes, she called me back, told me why. Well, you know, with them being our provider, and, you know, partially because why Duke Energy is in Dillon is because we have kind of took them as a provider, correct? The city has. I mean, well, no, I mean, we don't We don't have a choice in that. Okay. But is there any protocol where if they know we're going to be without power for that longer time, can they contact people? If, can if, we get an emergency? Because I know of at least two red lots in Dillon that it, they never got manned. Yeah. And, you know, it, it leads into dangerous situations, especially when you're dealing with uh, roads that have tours coming through or, you know, our local people kind of know where the red lights are at and automatically slow down. But you get someone coming, you know, down number nine that's not familiar with the area or Mullins Highway and before you know it, you know, they went through a red light or whatever. So I just, you know, I'd like to see maybe there's some kind of way we make sure that they're all manned in that, that type of situation. Well, and mainly the, the uh, stoplight you know, on that particular day, we got, I don't know how many we got, five, six, seven stoplights. Right. Okay. Uh, maybe eight. Um, we had four people working. Right. We brought in who we could get to come in. Oh, oh, I know. I mean, and then the highway department came out mm -hmm. and put out temporary stop signs okay. at right. some of those that wouldn't run. I was just wondering, if, especially when it's going to be, you know, lots of times we're without power, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, they fix the line or, you know, cars ran into a tree or, I mean, to a power pole. But uh, with that situation, it just looks like if they were going to be without five or six hours. They didn't know how long we were going to be right. out. Okay. Um, and what their protocol is, I don't know. Right. Like I said, I called because come to find out it was out everywhere, basically inside the city. But usually if you call, they'll tell you. Yeah. Well, in fact, I, my neighbor called and said it was going to be 45 minutes. Well, you know, that was right after it went off. Right. Because uh, they didn't have any idea at that time either. But you know, I was surprised it was back home at, back home at my house in two hours' time. I was very surprised. Crank that thing back up and blow a few things. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's all I've got. Um, um, Glenn on um, Knife and Calhoun, that little hot spot. Uh, I noticed it's cooled down. And uh, well, there's that street sign that's the other head there. I've talked with the highway department, and the highway department will not replace it because it's not defaced on the front of the sign and there's no bad language on it. We don't know what that is. I don't know if that's invitation yeah. or. Now, I've talked to them, but they will not. That, 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 uh, that, that look. It if, does. If, if we paint every sign in town like that, it, it just wouldn't make the city look good. I, I did do follow up with them again, and, okay. and that's yeah. what he had told me. Okay. And then we did. Uh, I know that I seen some alley work being done. Is that the alley work that's supposed to have been done before we could do Mr. Um, McClellan's? Uh, yeah, they haven't come to pay yet. Okay, but that was the alley yeah, Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hopefully January, we gave you the PO last week. So hopefully between now and the first of the year, depending weather. Yeah, we to and, uh, <coughs> I spoke to you, I guess, it's been a while now. That there's a little, little short street there, I think it's called Jerry Court. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? It, I saw it, and it looks really bad when it's wet. And I think that's something that should have been done, uh, I think it's supposed to have been done when our streets, which is the next street up, was done. That's been, I guess, 10 years now. And I was wondering is when that stuff get done, is there like any resurfacing? Way? Yeah. I, that, that's led to the seed funds. I mean, oh. I can. I think I turned that one in, if I'm not mistaken. That's mm -hmm. where one house is at the very end. Right, right. But, that, that, I think she's very disciplined. I see some lot of mud puddles mm -hmm. on the way back in there, and I think she really would. Really I'll follow up <coughs> with the county seat fund committee and make sure that, that it's on the list. doesn't mean that it's going to be paved, but all I can do is request it. I think all they do is push it and just make it worse. So um, she really would appreciate it. That's all I can do. All right. I want to close on to thank Todd Hayes and David Strickland for stepping in on the down home deal and they highlighted playground the area. In fact, he did the show right there on it. And David's at the golf course. I was too busy to do that show the last couple of months. I guess I started again the first of the year. Um, 
let the solar tank down. A lot of stuff going on in Dillon. Coming up next year, we're going to do here, especially out there at Radford and I think out there at uh, the other exit. There's just a lot of things happening. So, and the Christmas parade was a success. I really enjoyed it. It always is. I think we have more people this year than we ever had. A lot of people are great. Maxi Browse. Yeah. <laughs> Most I've ever seen it. And congratulations <laughs> to the Dillon uh, Wildcats. Yeah, the that's right. Four in a row, six out of eight. Mm -hmm. yeah, getting that parade, the marching band is 50 yards ahead of Max and me. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, Merry Christmas. If there's nothing, the <coughs> council call a motion to adjourn and go into executive session. I'll make that motion. All in favor? Opposed? Nine.